Hey everyone and welcome to the last edition of the 5 star creatures review uh, uh, Today's video will be the 5 star creature review for the Neander faction uh, I think uh, you guys are known with uh, this whole video series so I'm gonna just skip the intro uh, Just as always at the end of the video I'll be posting the uh, the overview list for the according tiers so let's start off right off the bat uh, first thing first, um, the Neander faction is a bit tricky. Uh, the Neander faction is a faction that works uh, much much better if there's uh, there are other Neanders in it uh, compared to the other factions. Like uh, the Morty faction is like the the most common faction that is you know good with a lot of mixture of creatures. So you can put like four types of creatures for type of faction in a Morty deck and it can still work pretty decent but the Neander deck is a bit different and I have the feeling that if you want to uh, make a good uh, make a good Neander deck or if you want your Neander deck to be strong at its full pot potential or close to his full potential you have to go for like a almost or close to almost full Neander deck so uh, that's why I'm gonna base off my ratings uh, um, based on that the fact that you're gonna be using a close to a full Neander faction deck so keep that in mind let's we'll start off first with the uh, Tidal Siren the Tidal Siren is a low tier uh, creature in my, in my opinion for the Neander faction probably the worst one because she doesn't have great abilities I mean uh, Tempest 5, Discord 7 I mean it's, it's, it's way too average for a 5 star creature I mean uh, there are better creatures with Tempest if you want Tempest. There are better creatures if you want the Discord and the Report 7 is uh, It doesn't work well with these two spells and her stats is really really weak You can see her at level 0 already with just 200 attack and 1100 health Just really weak creature Next off this uh, Sekhmet. The Sekhmet is a mid tier creature uh, Thanks to the Unbound, Blood Rage and Life Sap he's guaranteed to attack every round so a pretty decent creature. The biggest downside is the six turn cost. I feel like this creature deserves a four turn cost to make him a bit stronger. But now he's just a mid tier creature. Uh, next up, the Phantom Tyrant. The Phantom Tyrant is a mid tier creature. Sacrifice eight and Gas Cloud eight are really powerful abilities, especially with the Gas Cloud buff from a few months ago. And Sacrifice eight is just good. Uh, but m most people nowadays melt sacrifice A to the graboids or something better so you might consider doing that but I don't want to go too deep into that and next up we have the spider queen the spider queen is a mid tier creature uh, in my opinion the venom edge and immunity 9 definitely are decent spells uh, she's not very tanky unfortunately but uh, she can be very a bit more tanky and more useful in a full Neander deck, so definitely mid tier. Looks of the Anathema. The Anathema is, in my opinion, a top tier Neander creature. Uh, I think there might be some people that gonna disagree, but I really think that this creature is really useful, especially with the Rune update, uh, the Gas Cloud 8, and the Bullseye, mainly the Bullseye Rune update, because uh, a level 5 Bullseye Rune will add 50% extra attack. And uh, nowadays, uh, most uh, as you progress to the game, uh, more and more players will have creatures with frost armor like uh, a, a, mel a melded uh, I don't know a melded graboid with frost armor and also if you go in the higher levels of trials a lot of creatures will have melded uh, frost armor into it so uh, definitely uh, that's in my opinion uh, uh, Anatema is definitely a top tier creature in the current meta game so uh, just because of the bull's eye buff uh, rune buff and the gas cloud 8 Obviously the stone skin is nice. Next up the Nidhogg. The Nidhogg is also a top tier creature for the Nian faction. Uh, but keep in mind that the Nidhogg is really weak when he's alone in a random non Nianer deck. But if a Nidhogg is in a full Nianer deck or close to a full Nianer deck, then a Nidhogg is really powerful and definitely a top tier creature. Uh, as you can see on the skill set already, or totem 10. So if, if you have like 2 or 3 Nidhoggs, on your team, your whole of Neander faction will get like 1500 health already. Plus, Stone Skin is 
makes him guaranteed on the field and delay three uh, allows your neanders uh, to maneuver a bit more because uh, the enemy has to skip their turn definitely a top tier creature next of the ft i'm not gonna try to spell him i tried him in the past and i just can't do it so i'll call it quids quids that's how we type it on my guild chat if we want to talk about him um this, this dragon is a mid-tier creature in my opinion uh, the rebirth 9 is the highest by f so far in this game i think there might be one with rebirth 10 i think rebirth 9 is close to the highest and uh also uh this uh, badass dragon got a lot of, a decent amount of base stats at level 10 i think it gets close to 1000 attack and 2000 health combined combined with rebirth 8 uh, four turn cost and plug 8 weakness 10 definitely a solid mid tier creature really solid one uh he might look really weak on paper but i really think he is solid not as like imbalanced but just solid next up the abaddon the abaddon is also a solid mid tier creature with the torse rage whoops torse rage 7 retaliate 8 immunity 9 uh she's uh, the abaddon is like a different version of the spider queen so uh, the only downside is that the Torch Rage 7 is sometimes a bit vulnerable to spiky bits, but it's still alright. Uh, the, the downside why he's not a top tier is just because of the 6 turn cost. I feel like he, if it's 4 turn cost, then definitely top tier, if not close to top tier. Next up, with the Yeti. The Yeti is a low tier creature, in my opinion. They're pretty much useless abilities. Restoration 9 is so so. Tempest 9 is just uh, so so. And the Bellow, Bellow, um, the Bellow looks really good on paper, but I, I have a Yeti. And I, sorry, excuse me. I have a Yeti, I practiced with a Yeti, and um, uh, two things first. Um, a, lot, a lot of the times, your Yeti is above 50 health, so he's not gonna trade often. And a lot of times, your Yeti is not gonna be. Uh, on the right position uh, that means if your yeti is at the far right that means his ability will trigger like uh, as the last creature but by that time all your creatures already attack so you pretty much wasted your plus attack uh, above from bellow because once your turn ends uh, your attacks go back down so it's really hard to get him in get him in position to you know give your creatures that boost though that's why uh, he's not good, in my opinion. Next up, we have the Kumiro and Kitsune uh, combo. These are like the best Neander creatures that you can get. Uh, they are really, really annoying. Uh, very hard to get. Very deadly as well. Uh, I think a lot of... You will encounter the, them first at, I think, Dungeon 11-4. Map 11-4. Or in some higher level trials. Uh, they are really annoying because of one ability uh, no like all their three abilities are really good uh, i'll just go quick uh, through it uh, maybe some players don't know it because demonization that is like an improved version of stone skin like uh, it's a stone stone skin plus an insta kill whoever tries to dispose her rebirth 10 plus the jiminy uh, what the jiminy does is she always revives the kitsune on the battlefield while you can while well, Kitsune always uh, revive Kumio from the graveyard to battlefield if Kumio is under a graveyard and it cannot be negated so really deadly so Kitsune is obviously a top tier as well you got Dance Macabre and Unbound next up we have the Oinari the Oinari is also a top tier Nyanda creature because of one ability uh, this one the, uh, the S Resurrect when played, returns one creature with a revive skill from your graveyard to play. Uh, this ability is um, for 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 the period of one turn actually better revive because once you play this card, uh, your creatures is already gonna get re revived. And I think that creature that gets revived can also attack uh, act on the same turn. I'm not sure, but I, I think so. I, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but. Other than that, uh, the Rebirth 7 and the Feral Fever 10 uh, makes her pretty good. Her only downside is the 6 turn co cost. 
six timer and also 20 uh, creature cost here 20 creature cost and that's her downside but uh, even with that she is definitely a top tier creature because of the s resurrect it's a really strong ability uh, next up to rich hunter the rich hunter is in my opinion a top tier near the creature uh, she's pretty good because of the soul snatch plus sweeping blow so she will get really fast to 2000 attack and uh, plus with the dodge uh, 6 uh, dodge 6 makes her twice as tanky um, as normal because 50% of the attacks are being uh, dodged and in a full Neano deck uh, she usually has decent amount of hit points so that's why she's also a top tier in my opinion as last we have the Easter Bunny that uh, I've never played again I, I played, I played against her once in the Sky Arena, so I don't remember what happened, but I really don't have, I have no idea. But I think she's the top tier, but other than that, I can't go too much into details on her. So, that's the last one for this video, or video series. So, uh, sh the, the list should be popping up again, so on the left side, the top tier, on the mid row, the mid tier. And on the right side uh, low tier so I really hope you guys uh, like these uh, five star review series because there was a lot of requests for it and uh, you know feel free to comment and post uh, re uh, questions or uh, more requests uh, if I see like uh, something is being requested a lot I'll try to make a video out of it so uh, as, as always uh, thank you for watching and uh, Hope to see you again in my future videos. See ya!